Do you know what is dental elevator? What are the different parts of the elevator? And why do we need different elevators at all? The dental elevator is made of a handle, shank and blade. The handle can be parallel or perpendicular to the shank and it can be different shapes or sizes. The main idea is while holding it to achieve a stable grip of the instrument and simultaneously to be able to apply controlled force needed for the extraction. The shank connects the handle to the blade. It should be strong enough not to bend upon the force you apply. The blade is the working end of the elevator. We have a lot to talk about the blade. When we are talking about different types of elevators, most of the time the blade is the part that differs. Let's start with the straight elevator, because it's the most commonly used. Examples are Copeland's chisel and straight Warwick James. The blade is parallel to the shank. It has a concave or straight part which is oriented toward the root surface and convex part which should be toward the bone. Straight elevators differ accordingly to the width and shape of the blade. Now you will ask me what will guide your choice? It's really up to the doctor's preferences. Basic rule is that the curve of the concave surface of the blade must adapt well to the root surface. If the curve is not right or the blade is too wide, the elevator won't be able to go in depth of the periodontium. Another factor is the space between the teeth, especially when using the wheel and axle principle. If the blade is too narrow, it will just rotate in the embrasure of the teeth without luxating it. If it's too wide, luxation can be achieved because you will push the tooth more to the distal instead in a closer direction and the distal bone won't permit for such luxation. With time, you will feel which is the right elevator for the exact clinical case. The truth is that I have one exact straight elevator, which is my favorite, and I use it for most of my closed extractions. Another type of elevator is the angled or curved elevator, which features blade positioned at an optimal angle relative to the shank. These elevators are thoughtfully designed as pairs with left and right variant. However, it is important to note that the designation of left or right does not restrict their usage exclusively to the teeth on the corresponding side of the dentition. Rather, these elevators can be used on a single tooth with different approach. The two main types of angled elevators are the triangular type and the peak type. Typical example of triangular elevator is the Cryer's elevator. The elevator has a triangular blade which is slightly bent and is at an angle to the shank. The triangular elevator is most useful when a broken root remains in the tooth socket and the adjacent socket is empty. The elevator is placed in the empty socket and then turned in a wheel and axle rotation with the sharp tip of the elevator engaging the cementum of the remaining root. Examples of peak type of elevators are the Hockey Stick, Apexo and Warwick James elevators. Their blade resembles the straight elevator's blade, having a concave and convex part, but it is positioned at an angle to the shank. They can be used as triangular elevators to elevate a broken root from its socket or by drilling a groove in the root and inserting the elevator in it. They are very commonly used in open extractions because they provide alternative pathway of delivering of the luxation forces to the tooth, which cannot be achieved with straight elevator. Winter's elevator and Winter Cryer's elevator are crossbar elevators. In these kind of elevators, the handle is perpendicular to the shank and with them excessive amount of force can easily be generated. So be very cautious with those types of elevators. Okay, let's recap. This won't be just a rehearsal. When you see this sign, pause the video and try to answer the question. What are the parts of the elevator?
what is the basic shape of the blade of a straight elevator and how you should position it. What is the significance of the angled elevators and can they be used for teeth opposite to their corresponding side in the dentition? Why should we use crossbar elevators like Winters with caution? This video provides a concise summary of the knowledge on this topic derived from the referred sources transformed through my clinical experience. If you find it valuable, hit the like button, subscribe and drop your questions in the comments below. You can join our mission by contributing on Patreon. Only together we can revolutionize dental education.